Hey there, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Property Investors Handbook Podcast. Today, we're diving into a topic that's crucial every property owner out there should know, and that's navigating the complex world of legislation changes and updates in property management. It seems to be happening all the time lately. We've got uh, the expertise, once again, of Colleen Sutherland from Sutherland's Property Management Group here to guide us through this labyrinth. So buckle up as we explore how to stay ahead of these changes without getting overwhelmed, or I'm going to guess, once we've spoken to Colleen, that you don't have to worry about it at all because she's on top of it. Colleen, welcome. Hey, thanks, Adam. Colleen, can you give us a give us start by giving us an overview of why staying up to date with legislation changes is crucial for well, a property owner if they're doing it themselves, yeah. or yourself as a as an agency. So, staying up to date with legislation allows you to introduce each piece of legislation into the tenancy seamlessly. And the other reason is if anything does go wrong and the tenant has the RTA to rely on and it gets to tribunal, when you're in tribunal, it's the property manager or the landlord are the professionals in this equation. They're the ones getting paid. So there is no excuse to not, wow, I didn't know know that. And the um, adjudicator doesn't care. No, he, well, you should have made yourself aware. He expects wet. you to yes. know. Yes. So, again, a proactive approach, doing the training, and I get a lot of these bulletins come across my desk and reading and researching, that allows us to create the systems that we'll implement when the changes come. So you set up as a, a full service agency, you know as soon as a legislation uh, change comes into effect, you've got systems and processes to manage that and to take any steps necessary with any tenancy or, or property management agreement that you've got. Yes. So when it it comes across our desk, it's probably 12 months before it's introduced. So as property managers, we have 12 months to study and implement the changes and integrate it into current and sure. new tenancies. And we work out a plan on, of how we're going to do it. Sure. Yeah. And I think it's key here. I mean, I remember us talking about dogs a while back and uh, legislation changes that, that came with, with pets. Yes. And that they suddenly, you know, that you, you had to have really valid reasons not to, to do it. I mean, you guys, this is what you guys get paid to do for your, your, your clients and to know yes. all this. Because I can imagine as you know, a, a property owner who does this themselves, it's not their, their main focus. Yes. They've got their own jobs. They've got their own families. They've got so much going on in their, yes. their lives. Very easy to miss something that, that comes in that could very well be a, a real problem should they, you know, break the legislation accidentally Correct. by not knowing it's there. Not knowing it's there. So what would ordinarily happen if you're going to manage your property yourself and there's people who do and do it quite successfully they will have the time it's the time that it takes not only you're not paying me just to collect the rent and fix the leaky taps i know a lot of clients think that but yes it's it's just there's so much to it so you're paying me for my skills my knowledge my experience and i've got lots of it and that's what you're paying for we can't prevent human nature and that's you know an insurance claim but sure. what we can do is minimize the risk so one of our favorite sayings is education is the most cost effective form of mis- risk mitigation it comes up all the time all I love the time it. so it's it. educating me then I help educate the landlords and the tenants, and then it runs a lot smoother. Oh, fantastic. How do you communicate legislation changes to your, your property owners? Is it necessary at all times, or are you just looking after it in the background? Some of the things we're looking after in the background, because they might be trying to tweak what they've already done. So we've had four years. Let's just take the last four years as an example. So we were heading for legislation changes in 2020. But obviously the pandemic hit, so we couldn't do that. However, on the turn of a dime, they introduced the COVID response, the emergency response well, in housing. And that, had, that would have been, had to be implemented quickly. Yes, mm. and they implemented it quickly, some of it without thought, but we worked our way around it. Mm. And, and it did take a lot because we had to do 
you know, whether it was helping people to reduce their rent, have a rent reduction, able to break their lease, all sorts of things for the for the next 12 months in particular. Then as the COVID response was coming to an end, here comes stage one of the tenancy legislation. Wow. So that's where we're talking about the pets and all that sort of thing. So we had some immediate changes for that and then 12 months later there would have been a stage two. So we implemented the stage one but what I did was I created probably PowerPoint presentations because what I found find is people read along with me talking. Sure. Yeah, so yep. that was probably able to sink in their mind. But I did say if you've got any questions – call Bri or I and we will walk you through it. So we did it that way and then again stage two, so we brought back the ones that we knew weren't in just yet but we've already done these ones. Now they've just put on us that a rent increase, while they were trying to do the and trying to keep it at 2%. Yep. And so, you know, my argument was are you going to keep everything else at 2% increase? No, you're not. Only 2%. But what they've done is we can only put the rent up once a year, fair enough, but it's attached to the property and not the tenancy. So you're in there for 12 months and it's at $500 a week. Yep. You wish, but it was $500 <laughs> yeah, yeah. a week. Well said. And in six months' time, your job has transferred you to Mackay. So you're going to have to terminate the lease and we have to find somebody else to move in and all that sort of thing. But I can't increase the rent. So even though in that six months since the rent went up for you, the market's moved again and the property's now worth $700, mm -hmm. I can't put it to $700 because it was increased in September. You're moving out in February. I can't increase it whatsoever until next September. But what if the new tenant has then taken a 12-month lease from the time in February when I've moved out – you can't increase it halfway at that September point halfway through there. You can. You can. So what happens wow. is in February, you move in in February and it is 12-month lease. Yep. I let you know it's only going to be $500 till Until this then. September. Wow. And okay. then the rent will increase to this even, much money. Even understanding and knowing all that. I, yes. You know, this is why people need a property manager because, you know, knowing exactly how that falls because my, my instant, you know, thought was, oh, well, that – they sign up for a tenancy so that the landlord's missing out on increasing it from that, in that example, of September until the lease comes up again in February. But no, you can. and Yes. You know, so you, you do a built-in rent increase. Right. But I still have to go through the same process that two months before the lease expires, I have to remind you sure. in writing that it's going to go up to $700 on the 29th of September. Sure. Okay. So uh, that key thing to understand here so in terms of tenancies if you're coming in not on the anniversary of, of yes, a rent increase that's you're based, a whole so you're doing a whole lot now of tenancy yes. agreements that have this in the middle of them yes Rental so that legislation hasn't come in as yet but it will be in very shortly and this what are we march 2024 so it will be in shortly and going forward this is how we have to yep. this is how we can only increase the rent. So we've already got landlords upset that it's coming in, but please know it's not the property manager, it's legislation. Mm. It's the government. Go you and yell at You can only do what you've, Miles. What you're guided yes. by with, with legislation. Yes. As we've talked about, you, you get a lot of these uh, changes and some are important, some not so important, but... Yes, correct. So there's legislation and you can read it and go, oh yeah, I know what that means or I understand what they're saying. There is the Tenancy Act and there's the tenancy regulations. So the regulations tell you how to implement the Act. And that might be a lot of gobbledygook for you, oh, but you a, have to know how to field. interpret yeah. the, legis the legislation. Yep. And that's where some property managers and maybe landlords come undone to go, yep. oh, the tenants have done this and this and this. It's only because you don't know yep. or you don't know what you're looking for and all that sort of thing. Yep. Another great reason to have someone like yourself with 30 years of experience <laughs> having, having, you know, having dealt with this stuff. Because as you, you keep talking, Colleen, it, it's, it's making my brain explode it, on, on, yeah. on if you had to navigate that yourself. I mean, you're an expert. This is what you do every day of the year. 
and you know property owners doing this by themselves and do you know to- if I wasn't a property manager uh, there is no way I would do this myself no because of what we know you have to know and you miss something too bad, so sad. So be- if you've done something wrong, like you're at the tribunal trying to get the tenant out and you've done the notice to leave on the wrong day, one day too early or on the day, he'll the magistrate or the adjudicator will chuck it out, start again. Wow. Yeah. You've got to know all this stuff. Mm. You, 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 you must, knowing what you do know, doing what you do do, you must think property owners, landlords who do this themselves must be scared for them on what what could potentially go yes, wrong. Yes, it could cost them thousands. And do you know? And I I don't want to brag. <laughs> yes, you but I'm the one who is not afraid to go to tribunal to hash it out with the tenant because the tenant's been told this from the RTA and I know it as this. So the only person who's going to give us a definitive answer is the adjudicator. And if you understand what the adjudicator is saying, you either stand corrected or you go i thought so yep yeah yep. most of the time it's i thought so but whatever i don't want to go to qcat just to be a smarty pants no. i want to know that i'm right and i'm doing the best i can yep. for the client yep and, I and love that's that, where i get it, a lot it, of training from it's something that's come through in all of our podcasts colleen that you're willing to stand up for your, your yeah clients not afraid and, and your tenants you know and you know a bit of a backbone and because you hear so many it, fluffing around oh, we don't want to go anywhere near that or anything I know like it that. can but if be it's scary the right thing to do to get the right result I love that you're you're willing to do it yes so if you go in the adjudicator is there and he's going to tell you what the end result will be so you just sit there and accept it so you've got to put your ego out the door mm. because it can be very easily bruised I can imagine. but if you go in there and take it as a lesson so whether it's a lesson of oh I stand corrected or it's a lesson of that's what I thought it's a lesson. Mm. And and then the next time you know, look, Mr. Landlord, I can't claim that I tried to last time and I got it got thrown out. Yep. Yeah. You know, Colleen, I've got a question here. And I think I already I think I'm gonna answer it for you because you won't you won't answer it the way I want you to. <laughs> I was gonna ask, you know, for someone managing their own property, what advice would you give them to stay compliant with the law and do you know what your answer should be? Don't do it. Get your property managed by us. That would be the first point of call because, one, I'm biased, but, two, I know what – what they will drag you through the coals. Yep. And they try – and they've got no compassion. So you've got to have the backbone to be there. You've also got to do have the time because it's very time-consuming. Yeah, it's very time-consuming. But if you're set on a price point, expect then you will receive back what you pay for. And if you're paying full fees and you can't see the value in it, then possibly there's no value in it. They're just charging that because that's how much we charge mm. and cannot there's justify. A bit of that out there too, isn't yeah. It? Yep. And yep. can't justify, you know, with their experience, knowledge, blah, blah, this blah. This is why I implore everyone to have a listen to this series that we are making here, the Property Investors Handbook, because in each episode, we do really unpack the value that you you offer here. And there is so much to it. As we've talked about so many, there are so many property investors out there who just think, where's the value in having a property manager? Why am I yes. paying these fees? You know, all they're doing is that the, the tenant just pays the money into their bank account and they go and have a look at the place yes. every now and again. But have a listen to our episodes. There is so much involved. And like we talked about in a previous episode, there is value there that you can see, but it's also the stuff you don't see and the value that's there if something goes wrong. And Yes. Uh, so what you're not paying me or my staff by the hour. No. It's not like, oh, I paid you $100. What have I got for that? Mm. It's when if something goes wrong, and it usually does, we know how to fix it. So you're paying for my time, my experience, my knowledge, my knowledge of legislation, all that sort of thing. And that's what wrapped up and is wrapped service, up in that hundred service. There's yeah. someone you can ring and they're on the end of the phone. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Because when you're in a panic and something's gone wrong with legislation, you need to ask somebody. Yep. The tenant has the RTA, whether it's always right or not, is another story. But you've got me. Yep. So Aubrey and we've got that and Bree's got the longevity, um, and you've got, and she's had the constant training on this legislation that yep. 
helps our landlords. Fantastic. Well, look, having a seasoned property management team on your side like Colleen and uh, and Bree at Sutherland's will make all the difference in staying compliant and, and stress-free. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to managing your investment properties. Catch you next time on the uh, Property Investors uh, Handbook podcast. Thanks so much again, Colleen Sutherland. Thanks, Adam. <laughs>